This is the grade eight practice test for T and ready. Currently question number 19 on this version. This is a calculator section, doesn't really matter here. Quadrilateral Q, R, S, T, and its image Q prime, R prime, S prime, and T prime are shown. So here's the, what's called the pre-image, which is what happens before you translate or transform or whatever. And uh, the image here, which has the prime, it's not Amazon Prime, I don't think free shipping. Uh, maybe it's free to go from here to here. I don't know how that works. Anyway, um, that's the image. What is the sequence of transformations that results in the quadrilateral QRST being mapped onto quadrilateral Q prime R prime S prime T prime? Now, the issue here is really taking a look at finding one point and translating it. And it's easier or transforming it, I should say, because it's not all translations. Um, find one that has like a weird register. So T is at 2 and 2. That's not great because if I flip X and Y, I can't really tell anything's happened. I mean, visually speaking. So pick one that has just a, a bit more odd placement. This one's pretty good. It's at 3 and 4. So Q's currently at 3 and 4. That's where we are. I'm also going to take a look at the images first. You'll notice that QR, the side, and Q prime, R prime are both on the outside. So in my head, that seems like I'm probably going to do something where I fold it over a middle like this, kind of like you fold a book one on top of the other. What I'm trying to do is map this point to this point. So that seems like something I'll probably end up doing. Maybe I won't, I don't know, but it's a good way to get that result. So looking for those sorts of things early, is it changed in a different orientation, like is the T and the Q up here all of a sudden, that's probably some sort of rotation, right? We have to be aware of how it's changing. And it's certainly not this exact same shape down here, so it's more than just a single translation. The size has changed, which indicates probably some sort of dilation. Because it's the only one of the four major transformations that change size. So let's sit at Q now and work. I'm going to do each one of these if it makes sense to do it. A reflection over the x-axis. So here's the x-axis right here. I'm going to make like a little bit of a terribly drawn straight line, straightish line. So the Q is one, two, three, four points above. So I need to go, if I'm reflecting, it goes the same distance, the opposite side. One, two, three, four. That's where this point will be after a single transformation. So actually, I was going to put that dot there, but that's kind of a dangerous thing for me to do. So instead, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of an X there. X marks the spot. That's where I'm currently located. That way, I don't lose my mind and think like, well, I'm done. Having an interim mark is helpful. And then uh, dilation. So dilation is where you take a sort of an overview of how far away your point is from or anything is from the point of dilation whether it be a single point or line or whatever um, and then ad uh, adjust as defined by the scale factor so what i'm going to do is say here's my origin because they tell me it's dilation at the origin if they said dilation about three four i'd need to mark three four and then do a quick analysis of how far away it is uh, I can easily just look at the number and see right now it's 3 and negative 4. That's where I'm currently located. But I'd rather just do a, a little bit of a different analysis and look at what happens to the X and then look at what happens to the Y in terms of where they're related from the origin. 1, 2, 3. See how it's the same line now? So the X is at 3 currently, 3 away, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, negative like this. And that's where those numbers are coming from. So then I apply the scale factor. It says origin scale factor of two, which means it's twice as far away from the origin. So I need to multiply by two. Really tough, right? Six and negative four times two is negative eight. The only thing that people mess up on here is they go back to this point for some reason and start to go six over and eight down from here. That's not how that works. If you're dilating about the origin, that's your focus point. So you have to go back there to make your adjustments. So instead of being here, I go one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's on this line. And then I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
And there's my point. This maps directly on top of this. That's what I want to do. I want to map that point exactly so it looks like A is probably the way it's going to go. Um, I might check again. Uh, for instance, I'll do S. S is 2 above, so right now it's 1, 2 below, so my interim point is here. It is currently at 6 and negative 2. I'm going to multiply that by 2. So my point would be 12 from the origin and negative 4 from the origin. So I'm starting at the origin. I'm going over 12. I'm going down to 1, 2, 3, 4, and voila, there it is. It maps perfectly, so my answer is A. Now, rotations are a whole other thing. It will generally change the look of the relationship. So say I had this. It's at 3 and 4. We've already determined that. So I'd have to do a rotation about the origin clockwise, which means it would go this way. That looks pretty good, right? But you'd have to think that the shape would change. If it's based off of this and I'm going to shift around, it's probably going to look like this a little bit, somewhere down here. All of this line won't be exactly straight like I drew down here, but just as a general rule, it's going to change the orientation of the shape. Sort of quick method you might want to use is, since it's about the origin, we just make sure that this is at 3, 4, so we sort of make this. So I need to recreate as if this one, since it's clockwise rotation, goes this way. Imagine this hinges here, and you just push it so it falls over, which would mean it's 4 on this axis, so it becomes 4 on this axis. And then you would go 1, 2, 3, and the point would be there. That's where Q prime would be at a 90 degree rotation clockwise. And if I was to do 270, you'd go the opposite way. But anyway, that one's not it. Uh, because it doesn't, and then I'd have to do the scale factor. So I'd start here, and it's currently at 4 and negative 3, so it should be at 8 and negative 6. And that would be here and here, and it's just not. It's not there. Uh, dilation first, that might be an option. I feel like we did a dilation so it makes it easier, so I'm just going to pick this point again and say 3, 4. And since the scale factor is 2, I'm going to need it at 6 and 8 because times 2 times 2. So Q, the, our middle point would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's where our X would be. And then translation of two units right, and then two units down. No way, it didn't even cross the axis, so that's out. Um, and then finally, they want you to do a clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation down here, 270 degrees. So I'm here, counterclockwise would mean I'd go this way, so you'll notice that the point on the axis is 4, and it's 3 up from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. So that would be 90 degrees, and then I would flop it down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, one, two, three. This would be a 180 degrees rotation, and then I'd just flip it up here. So it kind of gets me right back to where I started. So you can see a 90 degrees clockwise rotation and 270 degrees counterclockwise put you in the exact same place. So now my middle point, or my X that I draw to indicate that I'm not quite done yet and don't pick that answer, it would be here, and then I would do a dilation, and we showed that didn't work when B failed, so it's going to fail in D as well, so our answer is A. I gave you a little bit of longer explanation, just so I have a chance to cover quick ways that you could do those transformations, but originally the first one worked perfect, and a nice visual cue is that, well, QR is on the outside, it's outside here, and the orientation is not that far off, it's not this, um, they're only one quadrant apart, if you were going to flip this thing down here, it's going to change it to where the longer sides are actually vertical as opposed to horizontal like this. So you'll end up with uh, a bit of a different look overall. The orientation would change. But the idea that the QR is out here and the Q prime R prime is out here, that gave me a huge hint right at the beginning. That could save you a ton of time. Um, you don't have to do all the work if you can get a feel for like what transformations make things do. So use your eyes here and then uh, follow through by performing a couple transformation sets and you'll find your answer.